So in this video, I just wanted to show you this fantastic plugin by a good pal of mine, Jared, um, the runtime data table plugin. If you search for runtime data table on the marketplace, you'll see that you get easy CSV and runtime data table. They're both by Jared. But if you buy the runtime data table, you get easy CSV as part of that. So uh, in the UK, that equates to 1275. But the power it enables you, kind of opening up the ability to import data at runtime from a Google Sheet. And I'm going to show you how to set that up. That Google Sheet, of course, can be updated on the fly with live data and then be used as a conduit to import into Unreal Engine. And then let me get our game instance. So I've actually set this up in the game instance. You can set it up absolutely anywhere, but I'll run through what I've done and why I've done it. Now, I'm just going to concentrate on the nodes that are dealing with importing the data. So that is this group here. This is for my real-time data visualization tutorial, which uh, I encourage you to watch. And it shows how this data is being used and implemented. So this is the first node that is part of that plugin. So you can, if you do a search for Google, sheet there you go update object or struct array from public google sheet and that's what drops in okay so a couple of prerequisites you need to have a struct established that is the same structure as your google sheet so here is my google sheet where i've just got 10 columns with 12 numbers in it can be anything. These are just integers. Um, they can be floats. They can be booleans. They can be um, vectors. The one thing that I would advise is that if you're worried about knowing the correct format in which to import the data, the best thing to do is kind of reverse engineer that. So first things first we would need to create a struct so first things first we would need to create a struct to be able to align our data to so let's have a look at the struct here so if you don't know about structs you can add a structure here and with that structure you can then add different variables. So there are my variables, column one to 10, but you can add all sorts of variables, absolutely anything, a string, a text, a vector, a rotator, a transform information. Um, but for our purposes, I'm only using floats. I'll show you another example in a moment where I've used this much more extensively for my flock project, which uses the runtime data table plugin extensively. So there's the structure now in this project i did have it running from within the engine by having a data table originally now i've um and this is what i mean about kind of backwards engineering to get things working i would just work within data table and make sure that all the variable and variable variable types are working within your blueprint and then when you want to start dealing with external data I would then come to my data table and just export that as a CSV, which I would then open up in Google Sheets. And then I've got a guide to all the formatting that's required, particularly for things like vectors, because there's parentheses and it gets a little bit more complicated. So backwards engineer that so you have a reference to work with. As stated in my example, I am just using floats. They're actually just integers, but I can add decimal points to these. B 
because of the way that I have set up that structure. They're not integers, they are floats. Okay, so coming back to here, once I've got that structure established, as mentioned, I'm calling this in my game instance under this event override, which is event initialize. So that's up here. If you've not watched my game instance video, I suggest you watch that because that explains how and why we're doing it here. But I've added my S graph array reference. That file is called S graph. When we're in the game instance, we just go add new variable, search for S graph, and then make it an array. Okay, so that's what we've done already. Let me get rid of that. That's what that is. Okay. Now with the Google Sheet URL, I've got that as a string, which I've just pasted in. Now there is something that you need to do on this end to make that data pass through into Unreal Engine. And it's fine, it's very straightforward. Once you've got your data in, you have to come up to share. So just make sure you have anyone on the internet with this link can view. And then when that URL is updated, copy that and add it here into my string. Of course, I can just paste it straight into there, should I want to, but I pop that there. Now, I'm also saving a copy of that graph data CSV into the project save directory. So that happens automatically because I've called that node and then given it a folder structure. So if I'm offline, I can also plug that in to backup CSV load data. So if there's a local version of that spreadsheet and data within on my hard drive and I'm not connected to the web, then it will pull the local version. And I've just got a reference to self in the owning player. Now you'll note that there is an event here. So that event I've just connected to this custom event. Actually, if you pull that out and go to, and when you add a custom event, it will create this node with all the correct signatures here. So don't add your own custom event, just drag out from call on complete and then add a custom event and you'll see it adds those nodes automatically. Uh, the uh, pins here, sorry, automatically. So that's important. So what happens? So from that, we have got a few variables. We have a Boolean, we have a string payload, which is in effect all your data. And then we create a runtime data table actor, which is a reference that spawns in the world just to be able to be accessed elsewhere. Um, you don't really need to worry about that, but I have created a reference to that here locally in the game instance so i've always got access to it um, if that payload has loaded successfully then i have just got at the moment a print string to screen and if it fails on that condition then i've just got it, that it's failed but this is the important bit here so we take the payload and we use this node here the make csv info from string and because the csv data has kind of come in as a block of text we then have to break it back up so we have our delimiter character which traditionally is a comma um, in spreadsheets and then the wrapper character so when you add this node these are automatically the defaults you can of course create your own delimiters should you need to but if you just leave that the default it should work from a CSV coming in. And then we're putting that into, if we just, once we take that and we just promote that to variable, we get a CSV info variable. And because I've made it here in the game instance, it just means I can access that from wherever I want. So that's the kind of getting it in. 
and testing to see if it has been brought in successfully. Now, if it isn't brought in successfully, there is an error built in, but that's just so you can see now, um, I've got this firing every couple of seconds because from my real time uh, data visualization demo, if that Google Sheet updates, then this data updates and therefore my, my graphic updates. Um, but that is a separate sort of workshop that I'm putting together now. So check out that playlist. But I just wanted to show you this to show you how that information is coming in. So we've got our row names in the first and then each of those items and then the columns being pulled in. So that's it for this video, but I'd encourage you to watch the real time data visualization playlist to show you how I'm now manipulating this. I will show you another example. So in my flock project, I have got another structure here, which correlates with the Google sheet that I have, but I just wanted to show that, of course, you can kind of set up different variable types. So I have strings, text, a text array, an integer, a string array, a Boolean array, a float array. Um, so all of those um, are obviously different data types. But then when we go over to my Google Sheet, this is the sheet that correlates with that. So those names are the same and therefore get pulled in based on which row that I am querying. Um, so it's a bit of a mess this, but you can see that um, depending on the formatting, there's different ways of setting things up. So um, if I have got titles or subtitles, um, I'm using Booleans here, so that's just zero or one. I've got integers that I'm using. Um, it's not a good example here. I'm using a integer array, but these actually only have one um, item in the array. It depends on how many boards there are in the exhibition. Um, so it just is a way of illustrating that obviously it can get a little bit more complex, but hence building a data table within Unreal Engine first, and then exporting that as CSV so that you can understand how to format everything and have a smooth import. Okay, I hope that's of use. So hopefully that's of use. Um, if these videos are giving you some value, then please do like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. So thank you for your support.